Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. J. L. Moreno is a psychiatrist and sociologist internationally known as the founder and creator of a number of crucial disciplines in human relations. Group psychotherapy, group dynamics, psychodrama, and sociometry. His books on these subjects have been translated into 20 languages. Although he is widely known as a scientist and therapist, his greatest contribution, which is the fountainhead of all his ideas, is expounded in his first book, The Words of the Father. Dr. Marino, do you believe that the idea of God is still valid in our times? Yes, I do. It was 50 years ago, before the outbreak of the First World War, that I had uh, three dialogues about God. God the Creator, God the Lover, and God the Scientist. I sent out an invitation to an encounter with all men. Come to me and meet me, I said. Rejoice, I have good news for you. The riddle of our world is solved. As long as I remember, I had before me two alternatives. I asked myself, who is this me? A dream? A bit of nothing? Vanishing like a rainbow in the sky, never to return? Or is this me the most real thing there is? The creator of the world, the first and the final being, the all-inclusive thing? In other words, am I nothing or am I God? The confrontation with these two alternatives was the dilemma which ran like a red line throughout my life. I suspect that every man is troubled by the same dilemma. Everyone has to find out for himself, whether these alternatives are also meaningful to him. Everyone is involved in this dilemma, whether he admits it or not. We all suffer from doubt and fear that we are passing fancies without any consequence, and we are annoyed and angry because of it. I began to search for an answer, and when I did not find it, I began to dig deeper into my own mind, into my own universe. I began to try to find meaning in an existence which is meaningless in itself. If there is nothing else except a dream-like passing into nothing, at least we can protest against an unreasonable fate, an unpardonable sin, a mistake of the cosmos to have thrown us out here into the desert of this planet, perceiving, feeling, thinking, without any chance or hope to become something which really matters. My quest, therefore, was, am I this perishable thing a hopeless existence? Or am I at the center of all creation of the entire cosmos? I began to wonder whether I do not have besides the responsibility for myself, for my own livelihood and for my own care, also a responsibility for all the people around me, my mother and father, my sister and brother, my friends, all the people in town and then beyond it, a responsibility 
for everything which happens in the nations, in far-reaching continents, among all the people on earth, their wars and revolutions and miseries? Is that not my responsibility? Is not the whole universe my responsibility? Responsibility cannot stop anywhere except in the all-inclusiveness of all things which exist, in all things which are created, in all things which stir and spread life. If there is responsibility, it must be for more than mere existence. It must be for a bigger role. How can I assume it unless I had a function in creating this universe unless I am a partner in its creation. I must have been there in the beginning billions of years ago and I will be there billions of years hence. I create it myself, therefore I exist. I began to think now about the gods which our forefathers have produced, the concepts they have evolved. I began to think, of course, living in the Western uh, civilization of the God of the Hebrews. The great Godhead, the God who is outside of me, far distant in space, unreachable and unknown, a mystery. It was a construction of the Godhead which was suitable for the time in which the old Hebrews lived. It was a great function which it fulfilled then for them. People were then frightened and, and dependent upon an enormous, <laughs> supreme a creator whom they could trust and who guided their lives and who gave their life a meaning. It was a god who, whom they never saw. It was a, uh, something like a he-god. He, the god. A god whom, who was outside of their world, but whom they felt that he is the greatest help in their lives. And then I began to realize there are other forms of godheads which in the course of centuries and millennia men brought about always when there was a great crisis in the development of the world and then came Christ and, the, and he suddenly made that mysterious, invisible distant God, very close very personal he was brought to visibility in the form of a personal uh, appearance of, of God he was uh, uh, the, the thou God the God was near as much a God of, of power and of enormous uh, 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 wisdom and intelligence that's a God of love and sweetness and closeness and that was a God which Christ brought into this world but again 2,000 years have gone by and here we find that that very great idea of Christ has not failed except that the people are not so easily sensitized by this concept. God may never change in a philosophical, universal way, but the concept of God which men creates changes. And the moment has again come to reevaluate for and to adjust the concept of the highest supreme being to us as we are now, to the world in which we live today. The God in the above the clouds, the God who, who is reached reaching into, into outer spaces and who is invisible is has lost its meaning. Uh, the God uh, who uh, is the God of love uh, has been betrayed so many times by men. Um, uh, that something new has to be added. A God which doesn't come only through the Zao, but who comes from within our own person, 
สู่ตัวนี้ Now begin then to think of me. I began then to 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 relate myself to the beginning, to the genesis of the Bible, the book, which has been given by us in two forms: as an Old and as a New Testament. In the Old Testament, the God is a He; in the New Testament, He is a Thou. But now there is a new God, a new voice of experience, a new communication with God, which goes through the I itself. Through me, through you, through every me, through every me, the millions of me's. Now, of course, for a moment, it sounds as if we are losing ground by, uh, because we had a single God, and now suddenly, by relating the idea of of the create of creativity, to to all the individuals, we suddenly have millions of gods. We have the problem now how to bring all these millions of gods together into some. Uh, uh, common denominator. The cosmic god concept came first. Then came the concept of the god of love, which included the cosmic god. And now, in our time, the I god includes both the cosmic god and the god of love. I began then to open the book, the Genesis, and there I read, and I began now to to to, to try and to understand how they came to assume that God has created the world at a certain time, uh, so and so many thousands of years ago, somewhere, and that He has proceeded in a certain way, and suddenly it became clear to me that what the Bible and what the Genesis say is. But our ancestors, the Inca children, projected the beginning in the past, thinking that the world has been created in the past somewhere, long before they existed. Actually, the universe is continuously becoming, and also God, being the result of the millions and millions of forces which fill the cosmos. He is in becoming. Me and you and me and you are the parts which are contributory forces, rivulets, to establish one day that moment when the words of the Genesis will become true. It is on in those days of deep loss of of uh, of faith. In my fellow men, that I suddenly felt reborn. I felt that I began then to to hear voices, not in the sense of a mental patient, but in the sense of a person, beginning to to uh, to, to feel that there is a, a a voice which which reaches all beings, and which she speaks to all beings in the same language, which is understood by all men, but one. Which gives us hope. Which gives our life a direction. Which gives our cosmos a direction and a meaning. That the universe is not just a, a, a jungle and a bundle of wild forces. That it is. That it is uh, in basically infinite creativity. And that this infinite creativity, which is which is true on all levels of existence, whether it is now physical or social or biological, whether it is in our galaxy or in other galaxies far removed from us, whether it is in the past or in the present or in the future, that we are all bound together by the principle of all inclusiveness, and that we all have to assume responsibility for all things. There is no limited partial responsibility, and responsibility makes us automatically. All the creators of the world, and I began to feel that I am, and I began to feel that I am, and that I am the Father, and that I am responsible. I am responsible for everything which happens. I am responsible for everything which will happen in the future, for every, everything which happened in the past, and even I'm helpless 
to do anything to remove the causes or to do anything that I had I had now the operational link to the entire world. Everything belongs to me and I belong to everybody. Responsibility is a tie which we share and which, which brings us into a new cosmos. And responsibility for the future of the world. A, a responsibility which does not always look back but looks forward. And so I saw the the cosmos as, a, as an enormous enterprise, billions of partners, invisible hands, arms stretched out, one to touch the other, all being responsible for what happens in this world and all being able through responsibility to be gods. And it was in, in such a mood of, of utter inspiration that I rushed into the house in which I lived. Uh, it was a house in the midst of, uh, of, of the woods of the Valley of May, a little town uh, near Vienna. The only thing was that I, I heard the voice, the words, words coming, going through my head. Uh, I didn't have any patience to sit down and write them down. Uh, and so I grabbed one red pencil after another, went into the top room of the house uh, near the tower and began to write all the words which I heard and which, which were spoken by me loud upon the walls. I am the father. I am the father of my son. I am the father of my mother and my father. That is what I heard. I heard I. I did not hear he or thou. I heard I. There is a deep meaning to this. He would have been wrong. It would have pushed responsibility upon the cosmic god. Thou would have been wrong, it would have pushed responsibility upon Christ. I, it's my responsibility. And I wrote and wrote and wrote and until I fell exhausted that morning upon the floor for weeks and months Nobody knew about the words which I had written on that wall, and I never felt that they were my words. I had a feeling as if they passed through me, they passed through everybody, just as they are through me, maybe modifications here and there, but in principle, that voice and that experience, I would like to share with all. And then, these words were then collected, put into a manuscript form, and they were then published as Das Testament des Vaters, a German book. It was published anonymously because I would have had to write on the cover of the book the name of all the millions of people living. And all the millions of people have lived in the past. It was anonymous as a matter of principle because it was not my book or not my words, although I had formed them. <laughs>